Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser-known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg. Good afternoon, Ash. How's it going with you? Afternoon. Uh, pretty stressed. We've got the UFO conference in about four days. Awesome. How's this that going? Saturday. It's, it's going good. We've sold out, um, which Amazing. is more than, more than I, could, I could ever have asked for. But it's just now it's just getting so close and we've got so much to do. So there will be people listening that are going to be coming. Give us a little rundown of the day. What What's happening? Yeah, so we've got four speakers, uh, like a range of topics, including an interactive remote viewing session cool. where the audience gets involved and they attempt the remote viewing. Amazing. Which uh, sounds interesting. Uh, we've got stalls going on, book signings, uh, raffles, giveaways. We've got a Matt Paranormal, who's a guest on the podcast. He's bringing his dolls. Yes. We can have a picture talk with Annie, the, uh, the crying doll. Yeah. That'd be weird. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Annie. Um, there's food provided for every guest, so that's probably been one of the most stressful sides of organising. <laughs> I have to get all the allergy stuff uh, of, of every guest. Uh, and he obviously being vegetarians, vegans, gluten free. Because um, the new law came out this month about allergies and when you're providing food and stuff, so that's like make sure we're abiding by this law because it's like. Oh, get individually wow. prosecuted and all this stuff. So we're like, ah, well, next time I'm not doing food. <laughs> <laughs> Just get some pizzas in next time. So. Yeah. From uh, Domino's. So, and you've got people with book signing and all sorts there, haven't you? Yeah, I've got Paul Sinclair, Phil Kinsella, Graham Randall, Simon Clark. Uh, all of that recently released books, quite popular on Twitter. Um, yeah. A lot of, I know a lot of people come in to like see them and stuff. They've been promoting the, the uh, con as well. Yeah. Which is good. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just hoping it goes well. So do you think Nick Pope will be in attendance? Because I know he tweeted out about it at one point, didn't he? Yeah, he promoted it. Uh, not this one. Maybe next year he could. Uh... So I, I haven't organised this in the space of like two months. Yeah. Um, I would recommend not ever putting on a conference to anyone. <laughs> but saying that the plans we've got for next year are just bigger and bigger and more <laughs> like the girls that work, do that do UFO identify with Nat and Abby who've been on the show but they yeah. they were like what the fuck I was like why why I was like <laughs> I've got these ideas I'm just going to do it um, but next year is going to be bigger and better even though awesome. I wouldn't recommend not doing it. <laughs> We're still going <laughs> to do it. And they would be announced on Saturday at the conference next year's plans. Awesome. Awesome. So what else have you been up to this week? Not much. Just <laughs> trying to sort out this conference. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And a break well, even as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a result though that it will. So, or hopefully will. Should do. <laughs> Someone commented on one of the posts remote, wasn't it? couple weeks back saying like oh just making money and I come in like you've obviously never put anything like this on because the cost I mean I, I put a cost on when I was sort of in my head organising it mm. I thought this would be like the top end I mean, literally doubled how much I thought oh, it would wow. have costed um, so even, even having it been sold out we're like still only just hitting the costs wow <laughs> so it's uh, like the, I mean we could sell more we, got, we have actually got a waiting list because we have sold out and had people messing me saying I still want to call them like, well, sold out the yeah. tickets. Yeah. But when we could sell double because the, the capacity is like 250. Yeah. And we're limited to 100. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we could literally sell double the amount of tickets and we would make money then, but we're not in there for the one needs. Yeah. Obviously, keeping it smaller just to keep it COVID secure and everything as well. So cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> looking forward to it, but I'd be glad when it's over as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It sounds like a right headache. Yeah. In a good about, way. In a good yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, it is in a good way. How about you? What have you been up to? Uh not much really. Um been firing off loads of contacts to people for coming on as guests. 
on the show. So if anybody has got any interesting topics they want to speak us to talk, look into or speak about, let us know. Um, hopefully we've got a few good ones uh, coming up. We've been reaching out to more podcasts to sort of share some trailers and share the paranormal and UFO related love because um, the share podcast, love. yeah. So the podcast community, um, like putting on a, fa- a conference, is it's bloody hard work and um, people. I, we're looking into and we discuss a podcast all the time, but there's something called podcast fade. And the, the average number of podcasts before, before people give up is seven. So, and we're on, including bonus episodes, we're well over 50 now. Yeah. Um, and this will be episode 44 of our main one. Um, so, yeah, we've, it's, it's, uh, takes a lot of time. It's consuming. Uh, I'm trying to find spare time. So that's what I've been up to. And, um there will be more details coming out however we're going to be looking at doing some sort of short episodes um sort of te- eight ten minute episodes uh in between our normal episodes about little subjects but we'll we'll go into to that more over the next week or so and hopefully we'll be able to start launching them so ex- excited about doing that aren't we yeah. um and hopefully people will like that that kind of additional bit so yeah, it's been it's been busy on the podcast front. Um, so yeah, this week um, I reached out to somebody who posted up in one of the social media groups um, about a haunting uh, and some paranormal activity. He put a post up to say that he would bought a house and was experiencing things going bump in the night, as it were, and decided to reach out and have a conversation with him so the the gentleman's name is bill bill is from a place called turnbull in connecticut in the u.s he's an ex-marine um turned sort of decorator property developer and he bought a property um which is on wikipedia it's a place called the zachariah curtis house very old and house. Very old house, especially in the grand schemes of like American history. In the UK, I know we've discussed it before. Amer- uh, UK history goes back thousands of years inhabited, um, but in the US, it's not quite as sort of populated, and you don't get the rich history like you would do in the UK or in Europe compared to to sort of the US. Yeah. So. Um, but this, this property is 300 years old, so it's, it's quite an old U.S. property um, in Connecticut, and it's experienced a lot of activity. Um, we spoke to Bill about portals, which if people have been listening to other podcasts that we've done, we've spoken to quite a few people about portals being seen, and especially like the Stardust Ranch, which we touch on. Uh, in this episode and he's also got a demon in there so that tweaked our interest even yeah. before beforehand so it's like right let's let's have a chat with you bill because you're you sound like you've got an interesting experience and we weren't disappointed as you're you're here um bill has a lot of information to get out and he does get that information out um but yeah, it's there's a lot of claims in there, and no spoilers. But um, a certain Ed Warren is believed to reside in the house. Yes, as well, but no spoilers. Um, no, no spoilers. But hashtag no spoiler alert. <laughs> it's also claimed that this house is more haunted than the original Conjuring house, which is a an actual house so as always we make no final judgment on the conversation we put Bill's story out there um, for you guys to digest but what I can say is 
that we do this as part of a video call when we're chatting to our guests and by having a video call you can see the person's face their expressions and from what I felt the experience he's having is an experience that he believes is happening in the property it yeah, doesn't sound it doesn't sound like a made-up story um, I like to think we've spoken to enough people now to know whether or not somebody um, is telling the truth or not again who knows it's not for up to us to to decide that but looking in Bill's eyes when he's talking to us definitely something's happening there um, there's plenty of uh, pictures that he sent us that we will put on the Facebook so you can go check the Facebook page out to see the pictures that we talk about in, in the in the episode yeah absolutely absolutely and there, there's a, quite a few pictures as well um, so yeah all that remains now is for you guys to have a little listen um, let us know your thoughts afterwards it's definitely an interesting conversation uh, and we thoroughly enjoyed the call so yep enjoy it thanks for joining us today i um made contact with you a couple of days ago just regarding a post that you'd put up on one of the facebook groups and i was really interested in the post that you put up and the experience that you've had so far and i wanted to to get get you on and have a chat to you because you mentioned a couple of things in your post regarding portals um, which is something that me and Ash have spoken about several times on our podcast previously so it was definitely something that that caught my attention um, so I won't linger too much on the post but if um, if you could just describe the experiences that you're having in your house for us sure well I bought the house almost three years ago. I think it'd be three years, January. And something that I just, you know, I just drove by it one day, looked at it. It says, I want to buy that house. Three days later, the sign goes up. 30 days later on my birthday, I owned it. Wow. And now I'm in my third year. And I'm going to have to exercise a demon out of the home. Right. So I mean, that's what so, I'm dealing with right now. There's a lot of spirits there. We were just there. With, you ever heard of Sean Austin? No. From the show, remember the show Ghost Loop? I, I don't think that was aired over in the UK. Okay. Well, we were just there. He's a, he's a psychic medium and he does a lot of uh, crossing over, mm-hmm. per se. Um, he works with Ralph Sarchi once in a while. He's a demonologist out of New York. But that being said, we we're there today and we we're doing a session. And uh, they were saying, first Elizabeth came up. That's one of the main women that lives in the home. She was born in that home. And she came, or one somebody said, uh, he wants to punch you. And that's the demon they're talking about. Okay. So before before we get into what's happening right now, could you explain? So you you bought the house three years ago. Yes. When did when did things start to feel strange? When we started actually doing uh, the wall demo in the walls, we t- took out all the plaster, all the sheetrock. There was a lot of mold. Cleaned the house up, got it dry, and that's when everything started going nuts. What what started? Uh, to, to first explain. The guy, what, it, yeah, explain to us what happened right at the start. What, what my worker started to, um, complaining that the house was haunted. I never told him anything about it. Um, and one day I witnessed the door opening and closing all day long. It just nonstop. Didn't it was just non boom 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 boom. And I was like, yeah, I was a skeptic at the time. So I had a median friend of mine uh come in and he did a he he said to me when i bought the house that um the house is haunted too and i kind of like as as like i said a skeptic kind of like just shrugged it off but he says well there's a revolution war soldier there and he lives up in that room upstairs and um i said okay so i said 
come in and do an investigation. So he did one. He said there's a residual energy of this woman. I believe that's Elizabeth. And then he spoke to the soldier, but it was all gibberish. He couldn't talk. It was all broken, broken up, English, whatever, just jibs and jabs. So the second time he came in, when the guy started complaining about the house being haunted, um, I had him come in. He didn't feel anything that day. And then on the third time, he comes out and he says to me, because I never go in during the investigations to stay outside. And basically, um, my wife's calling the kids on the intercom. Um, he comes out and he says, he drowned. And I says, who drowned? He goes, the soldier. And I says, well, what happened? He goes, well, he showed me water. And then I says, well, did you feel anything? And he goes, yeah. He says, it closed up my throat where I couldn't breathe. Like somebody was squeezing my throat, but from the inside. And then I had a sharp stabbing pain in my stomach, like hot butter knife. Wow, that's a great story. So about two or three weeks later, I'm outside and I'm talking to the owner of City Lane Florist, which is right next to me, his son. And I explained the same story that happened to him. And all of a sudden, I was paralyzed. I couldn't. He says, I turned white. I was looking up at the window where he sees this guy all the time. And he says, dude, you just stop talking. And then all of a sudden, I felt my throat close up. And I had a sharp stabbing pain shoot to my stomach. I grabbed my chest with both hands and I dropped. And I looked up on him and I says, it's effing true. I says, everything he said is real. And I asked him about six months later, I says, what did I look like? He goes, dude, you're a white as a ghost. I says, no, the ghost was in me. I was like, that was crazy. And that's when, and then when I called up Jacob, the median about it, that's when he told me, Bill, you're an empath. I didn't know, but I know now you're an empath. So I'm like, okay. So I have some abilities. And that's why these spirits always are trying to reach out to me all these years. And I never knew I was blind to it. So, okay, so you you say um, that you're an empath. Had you had experiences before you got into the house? And... More intuitiveness and discernment. Okay, but nothing <laughs> sort of? No, and a lot of anxiety all my life. And I never understood why. Why, why I'm, a, I'm a U.S. Marine. You know, hard as nails. This is, you know, this will take you down to your knees. You know, the anxiety will It'll take a strong person and make them feel like they're weaklings, you know, like they can't handle life and this and that. And I'm like, well, I'm done with this. You know, I did four years in the Marine Corps. I did three years as a private contractor for the military over in Afghanistan and Iraq. I've done a lot of things in my life. But once in a while, this thing just creeps up on you, you know, and it doesn't hurt me anymore. It doesn't bother me. Once I knew my gifts that I was more, it didn't, anxiety kind of went away. To a point. Plus, I know how to protect myself now. Spirit protection and other things. Okay, so going back to, to the soldier, you mentioned that you'd bought this house. Did you know anything about the history of the house before you bought it? I know that it was, uh, it was built in 1721. It's all on Wikipedia. If you look up on Wikipedia, the, the Zachariah Curtis house, it comes right up. Okay. Um, and the lineage and the um, everyone who's ever lived there, who's owned it, uh, built in 1721, so it's 300 years old. So did you know this history before you bought the house? No. No. Because in the UK, part of the, the buying process is that this kind of stuff would come up, or that, that if there was a history of the house, that that kind of stuff would get flagged by a solicitor or a lawyer or something like that would is that part of the process in the u.s or is it uh what are you talking about with the hauntings uh so maybe the the history of the house itself so we no. you would get no no that's something you would have to go to for the uh historical society okay yeah so to so you um so do you feel like you were drawn to the house before you sort of bought it because you mentioned that you said i, I want to buy this a couple medians I spoke to a couple of medians about it and they, they said, yes, it was, it, it picked you. It wanted you to buy the house. 
And I think it's, they wanted me to buy the house to free the souls in the home that are trapped there. But that's just one opinion because I have my friend, Sean Austin, who says otherwise. He says, there's a portal at the portal. These spirits are coming and going. So I don't know if this demon is holding the souls there or it just comes and goes as it pleases, which we know that's what happens. It comes and goes. Okay. We'll come on to the demon bit in a minute, if that's okay. I just want to find out. So the the door kept opening um, all the time at, at one point, and, and you call the mediums in. What what happened from there? Because that seems like quite a... You mentioned demons, and we'll, we'll sort of get up to that. But to go from the doors opening and, and this soldier to demons or a demon... What, what sort of happened in the timeline up to the, the point where it was discovered it was a demon? Just um, just a lot of spirit. A lot of... Um, they don't reveal themselves all the time. But um, once we were done, I mean, that was it. The guys were done. They were out. And so it was just me in the house. Right. And um, I had... Well, we just had investigations all the time. The, the Nesper team, the Warrens came. Um, they were the first ones to step foot in the door after my psychic friend came. And then um, the rest is history. I mean, really, I mean, just the amount of, we've had 15, 16 investigations already. All right. Places insane. So, I want to, so you, you get the Warrens and Nesper in. Um, so, could you explain a bit? more about how you got to the point where you started calling in all these investigation teams. Well, there's a place called the um, Twisted Vine. It's a restaurant. And that's very, very haunted. It was on the TV shows. Right. Um, on the Paranormal Channel. And uh, I went there just to see what was going on. And I mentioned my house. And they said, well, we may have somebody that's interested Mm-hmm. And so that's how the Nesper team got involved. Uh, and they came out immediately within a month. They were there. And so that's when those pictures. Say, yeah. I was going to say Nesper is the New England Society for Psychic Research for, for anybody in the UK. Um, they're sorry. the ones that, they're the ones, that's the Warrens. And we all know about with the Gutfield House, or the the uh, Conjuring, the Conjuring. Yeah, yeah. yep, yep. With that's the Warrens, all yeah. Nesper. That's all the Warrens. That's all okay. them. And so they took control of this this situation there. Yeah. Um, and we've got a lot of crazy stuff come through. So Still you sent us some. Stuff. You've sent us some photos. You've sent us some video. Um, which is great. So thank you for for sharing those. Considering we at that point we haven't really had a conversation about what's been going on. So um, we'll we'll put those up alongside the the podcast on the on the social media pages if that's okay with you. Sure. Um, so you get starting to get these groups come in, and I'm still intrigued as to how it gets to the point where this demon activity start so what what kicked all that part of it off let's say the first contact we had with it mm-hmm. i had a reiki master come in yeah a friend of mine she's a neighbor she's my neighbor and she wanted to uh come with her son and do a videotape of a haunted house for his uh, high, uh college project so we set the camera up in the front yard Mm-hmm. We go to turn it on, and it's dead. She says, "Well, I had 138 minutes charged on this battery." So what the spirit did in the house, which we thought was Elizabeth, because we thought Elizabeth was a witch, and that was the assumption. But that's what the demons want to do. They want to make you think it's something else than other that to, to detract from them. Um, so we thought it was. Something I thought it was her trying to kick us out of the house. Um, as I was video after that, we figured it out. She got a new battery. We did the interview in the front. Then we went inside, did another interview. And while they were walking around talking, 
my phone turns on and turns off. And it took a picture of me and within that two seconds, it gave me a message on my phone. It says, I hate priests. Oh, wow. Then I did another video, shut it off. And in the beginning, it says, shut up and quit. But she never said that. And it used Judas voice, which that's what demons do. They use other people's voices to make you think it's something else or somebody else. I'm thinking it's the witch or Elizabeth. Um, and at the end of her video, the witch or whoever laughs at us, cackled at us like an old cackling old woman. And it said, God bless you laughing, mocking me. Hmm. So, but this was all discovered after we left the home and we started going through our evidence. But before that happened, before we left, we were done with the interview. And well, actually before we were done with the interview, before the cackling of the woman saying that, I was just leaning against the wall. And everything's all quiet. And all of a sudden I got a severe anxiety attack. And I says, I'm being attacked. This isn't just anxiety. This is an attack. And I remember going, turning my head to the right and going, what are you doing? And she's a Reiki master. And she's sitting down with her hands on her knees and her hands are up in the air like this. And both fingers are going like this. Both hands are going like that. She goes, you see the energy coming out of my hands. I says, I know, but I feel something and I think we should need, we need to go. So that was basically the demon attacking me, trying to get her out of the house because she was blessing the house. So that was provocation. Um, and then, then the rest is history after that when we found her evidence. And I was thinking the whole time was the witch doing this. But later on, after we found out it was the demon, that's when uh, we put the two and two together. And there's more to the story. Elaborate if you wish. That, well, that would be great. Sean Austin mm -hmm. from the show Ghost Loop, which is not around anymore. Um, he's actually he's written two books, and he's coming out with a documentary soon. And uh, it's called Ma My Male Vice. I don't know if you guys have heard it, Male Vice, with his uh, demon um, attacks. So we one day we're doing a with myself. Sean and Eric Vitali okay. from the Nesper team. We were doing an investigation. This was last, not last summer, the summer before. And he says, I'm being attacked by a demon. And I said, what are you talking about? And I took a picture right when he said it. And I have the demon's face in the window above his head coming from the outside. And it was attacking me. And, he, and then he says, it's bothering me. I said, well, you're used to it. You know, and I'm kind of like, whatever, I chugged it off. And then he said, again, no, we got to go. I'm like, okay, whatever. Let's keep on going, doing what we're doing. On the third time, he said, we have to go. So we left the house. And that's when he started seeing the three fingers. I see three fingers. It's got a scaly tail. Um, it stands on two legs. It's feet or hooves. We got to the car. We whipped out the holy salt and the holy water. And we doused ourselves with it. And as soon as I put it on my head, you just felt the air get cold. You felt the air, the heaviness lift off her shoulders. It was like, <laughs> gone instantly. And I said, do you guys feel that? He goes, yes, it's gone. Okay. And later on, if you read his books, it'll talk about how he it came out on that night at his house. So have you, um, you mentioned about having three, it, having three fingers, hooves. Have you actually seen it with your own eyes? With the picture, but not physically, yep. no. Okay. Through the camera. So do you get a sense that it's in the house? Well, I always thought so, it was all the other spirits that are there. So there's many, many spirits. There's 40 to 100 spirits at any given time in the house coming and going. Okay. Okay. So... There's the active portals that are going on there. Yeah, so that that's something that, that I'd like to touch on now then, that the portals. So... Um, who, who has told you that there's a portal or how, how did you come to know about these portals? That was the, when the Nesper team first came in, 
it mentioned that there's portals there. And then once they were gone and Sean and I were doing an investigation, it told us where it was. Okay. And he even told us when we were standing on it. And if you see the one picture I shared where the guy is standing in the dark and he's got the shirt, it says F-U-C-K on it. Yeah. And you see the two wiggly lines coming from the ground. Yeah. That's exactly where the portal is. That's the spirits coming out of the ground. Okay. And I got the pictures. How does it make you feel when you're, when you're in the house? I feel nothing. I talk to them and they don't answer me. Barely. It's almost like they're told not to. So do you live in the house? So no, you, it's, no, it's a completely gutted house. Okay. It's a project house that I, 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 I bought because um, I'm a builder and I was going to restore it. And I haven't done anything in three years. <laughs> I know that feeling. Um, so what what is happening at the, what do you feel is happening at the house you say it's a portal for for, for spirits but where are they Correct. coming from and where are they going we don't to? know it's just we have your resident spirits there there's like three or four and then you have all the others that just kind of they're they, they come and go rent free okay you know? so please. do you um you say that you've had uh paranormal investigation teams and have they caught similar evidence to the the stuff that you've sent us oh yeah no this is where most of the evidence comes from okay you know because they come in with their their p7s and mm -hmm. you know and all their other ghost boxes and we got some crazy crazy equipment some people come in with high tech stuff yeah tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment and they're never disappointed you're not going to be disappointed coming to this home what Guaranteed other... to speak to somebody or something. What? Okay. What? So, do they get like um, EVPs and spirit box activity? But do you do they get anything else captured at the same time? Well, yes, a lot of orbs, a lot of orbs. I've gotten pictures. I have the most evidence with all my pictures. Yeah. Um, the two or the three spirits that that were following me around for the longest time. I told them to stop following me and they stopped and they went back to the house. Um, cause I have two houses in the house I live in and in that house. And then, uh, I had the two, you see the two white lights in those pictures that are shooting out of the ground, two bright mm -hmm. ones, those two right there. And I showed you the fuzzy ones standing next to each other. So yeah. those are the two that I capture and they were always standing next to each other. Any pictures I had, I'd be at a party and I'd be sitting on a rock wall and I'd take a picture over my shoulder and there they are just standing there. So I had that happen for a while, and then they started messing with me. You know, just fooling around, nothing bad. And I said, you know, you can't do this anymore. You got to leave me alone. This is my personal space. And and they have to listen. They have to. The rules of God. They have to listen. And they did. And they don't follow me around anymore. They don't come up and sh they don't show themselves anymore, which is kind of good. You sent us a picture um, where it's. I'm sure it's your back. You got little like, scratches or marks on your back. Yeah, that happened this last Wednesday. So what was that? Well, that told you were out of the house and this happened while you were there. Yep, I'm just sitting upstairs and I wanted to see if I could get any spirits talking to me. And then I said the I said the Lord's Prayer. And I didn't feel anything. Except for a little tingling in the back of my neck. Actually on my shoulder and a little like warm feeling on my neck. But see, I already have a hernia issue in my neck, and I have spasms all the time, so I'm just like, yeah, no, it's just all that. But if you look at my back and my lower back, that was a swipe right across my back, like an attack. And you can see the three fingers on my shoulder, like almost like burnt in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what Sean saw, and that's exactly what's on my shoulder. And I couldn't replicate that if I wanted to. And, and within a couple hours, they were gone. How does it make you feel? Because you mentioned that you used to be uh, a Marine. And obviously, you're used to... It pisses me off. Used to tackling foe that you can see as such. And this is obviously an entity that you you can't see. Um, right. or you haven't been able to see. So how, how does that make you feel when you go into the house? Are you... Doesn't bother me one bit. No? No. I see a load of the spirits that are there. Actually, today, 
I told this, I told the demon to leave. I said, you have no legal right to be here, to be on my property, on my land or in the house. He says, I don't want you here anymore. And I says, in Jesus Christ's name, you're not allowed to be here anymore. You have to use Jesus name or it won't work. And even then it may not work. You know, I've been talking to uh, father Rodriguez, who's a very pious Catholic priest from the old church. And he does his, um, all services in Latin. And he's where the Warrens are buried. He's right there. It's the step, step me cemetery. He belongs to the, the lady of the Holy Rosary. He's the priest there or father Rodriguez. And, um, he doesn't mess around. He does like seven, seven exorcisms a month. Wow. And he's nobody to mess around with. So I even told, I even told the spirit today or the demon, I says, listen, if you don't leave, I'm going to just have him come. And uh, we got you, through the spirit box. It says it wants to punch me. It's pissed off at me. I said, well, whatever. My um, house not yours. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you, when you're having that kind of confrontational conversation, do you get any kind of um, reaction from the demon? So is there any kind of, can you tell that you've angered it? Well, the only reaction I got was the day that was less, this last Wednesday when I got scratched. And that was the yeah. only reaction I've ever gotten in that home. Well, I don't even know me talking about that soldier. I thought the soldier's the one who showed me his pain. That could have been the demon yeah. doing that. You know? But the one thing the demon did do, if it was him or that spirit, they woke me up to the reality of the situation. Yeah. That is real. Spirits are real. Heaven's real. Hell's real. And demons are real. And angels too. You know, it, it, it was a huge awakening. It's, it just blows my mind. It's, I, I try to explain it to people. People look at me like I got three eyes, you know, and I grow on my, you know, whatever. Some people that believe, they believe. It scares people when I talk to them. Sometimes I have to shut the conversation down. I can't talk to them about it. It scares the hell out of people. So the, these marks, which you said happened last Wednesday, you said that was the first time you sort of got the reaction. Yeah, that's the first time I got So do you think like it's possibly getting worse? Do you think like obviously you've done they've done these marks to you, whoever's done these marks? No, this is the first time and hopefully it's the last. Do you, do you think like it could get worse? Like they maybe get a bit more power because they're able to actually physically Well, it's now known when I'm challenging it. It knows it's John. It said today, the spirit said he's mad. And then it said, he wants to punch you. But I had my, my cross on today that was blessed by Father Arias. I had my holy water with me as I was spraying myself down with it. And I have my holy St. Benedict's medal that's blessed by a priest. So you have to go into these situations. You have you can't go in naked. Your faith in God is not going to protect you. You need your cross. You need holy water. You need tools to do it. Because demons don't care. That's not going to stop them. You, they, the only thing that stops them is protection. Your faith is not going to do it 110%. So are you a practicing um, a Catholic or Christian? I am not. I'm actually a wasp. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Okay. So did you have a belief in the um, like spirits and that before you moved into the house? I always believe that there's something out there, mm -hmm. but I never actually had a personal experience until I bought the house. Now the house opened me up to my third eye, you want to call it. And it's everything's changed. My whole life's changed since then. So what do you see? Um, or what, how can you see this progressing now? So you've said to the, the demon that you, in Jesus's name, you need to, to leave. You're not welcome. What's the next step? Next step. Well, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to leave without a priest. I don't think it's going to listen to someone like me, even though I'm using the Lord's name. Um, I'm just going to leave it alone for a little bit and see what happens. So do these, does it only happen in that house? Or like, so where, where you live in is not in that house. Does anything happen when you're away from the house or is it only in that location? Only those couple of spirits that were following me around, those three spirits, because they just want to live through you because they're bored. 
I, I don't know what you want to call it. They're earthbound spirits. I talked to five readers about that. He doesn't believe um, spirits that are earthbound are people. He believes they're demons. I, everybody in the paranormal world knows that's not the truth, but that's just his opinion, which is fine. I still respect his opinion, but I even said to him, I said to the priest, I go, listen, to be honest with you, I don't think you're right on this one. I says, I think purgatory is here. I think purgatory is in the fifth, fifth dimension. That's why they always talk about the fifth and the third. I believe purgatory is in the fifth. Spirits that we can't see, they're in the fifth, and they interact with us on our plane. And um, with all the evidence I have, it's obvious. Um, the demon part, I don't think so. But who knows? Really, who knows? What do you think a, a demon is? Um, a, a demon's uh, never been a human being. It's born from the serpent, born straight from hell, straight from Satan. It's not a human being. It never was and it never will be. But it wants to live into us. It wants to be. A, it was never a human, and it wants to take people's souls. It also wants to live through us because it wants to be human. It wants to be able to walk in human form. And that's why they choose someone or a place to try and become like a human form. Yeah. But another thing, if you really look into it and you really believe in Christ, he made heaven and hell. He made the demons. You just can't give it a reason to do anything to you. Um, he gave you armor. You can't put a chink in your armor, like doing drugs, abusing alcohol. Anything like that, being negative all the time, being depressed, you got to pull yourself out of it. Because if you don't, that's when the demon clutches onto you because you have a chink in your armor and it's able to penetrate. And the Lord allows this to happen. That's why I'm so comfortable about it. It doesn't bother me anymore because I know God lets this happen. He made heaven and hell. He allows Satan to rule and run around the earth. He allows bad things to happen because... He gave us free will. And um, you got to play by the rules. What do your family think about the things that are happening? Because you said you've got a family with children. What? Yeah, my boys are fine. They're both in college. My wife doesn't bother her much anymore. No. And I told her about me going to the house today. And uh, she's like, good, good. Let them have it. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things, you know, I keep it to myself. I keep it with my guys that understand, you know, the teams and, um, you know, the demonologists and psychics and the paranormal guys that do the researches, you know, in the investigations, we keep it to ourselves. Now I'm just, I mean, I talk to some people about it. Some people understand, some people don't. So yeah. the teams I've gone into, like Nesper and the Warrens, what's been their sort of thoughts, their like conclusions in, in a way from their investigations? Well, we, we all know there's a demon there. The evidence is clear now. The evidence from last Wednesday, we know now it's there. But we've heard it, and they said it's here. Like, well, that time we got attacked. When Sean Austin got attacked, and we had the picture of that. You know, that's just compounding because what Sean likes to do, he's got a gift. A lot of people don't believe he can do this. I believe he can. He's able to cross people that are stuck. He's a light seeker. And I wholly, wholly believe that this guy, he he's able to cross spirits over to God that are stuck here in purgatory or whatever they are, earthbound spirits, purgatory, whatever. He's able, he, he, he'll hear help on the radio. And he says, well, do you, need, do you need help? Do you want me to help you get to heaven? And they say, yes. And so he does his ritual. Does the Our Father, and he uses the Holy Mary prayer, and then um, and he asks uh, the Archangel Michael to help assist in it, and then you'll hear thank you on the radio, and it's amazing. Now, it's just but when we're doing that, we've never gotten attacked doing that. But that one night we did, but I don't remember him saying anything or trying to cross any spirits over at that time. But that demon, I believe that's the demon. 
I thought it was a demon from the Conjuring 3 movie that just came out. And we all thought it was that. Because um, in the movie, I don't know if they talked about it in the movie, but he talks about the three fingers that he saw when he was possessed. Well, I think all demons that just have three fingers, to be honest with you. Because you get the three fingers on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. So me thinking that this demon came from that, that's the demon. It doesn't matter where it came from. It's there. And that's the same demon that tried to attack us that now or attack him. Because he used religious provocation that night. Um, so this is the same demon that's been there for hundreds of years. Is there any kind of meaningful communication with the demon as to why he's there? We haven't gotten those answers yet. We started to, but we didn't get much. He was just more of like, I want to punch him. And he was talking about me. So we're at that stage right now. You're very calm about the whole thing. I must I'm say. I'm like, you know, I eat a, eat a bag of, you know, hot dogs dude <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but in, deep down inside yeah i'm a little nervous yeah as i should be yeah most i just definitely. got a full chill through my whole body that's how i know something's around with, this is my with you there. yeah i've done something here but anyway it could be my guardian angel i just got a chill all over me just then when you said that that happens it does on our podcast <laughs> Um, yeah, that's weird. Um, so what, what's the next step in the action sort of plan, as it were, for you guys? What is your, is your end goal to get the demon out completely? Well, along with everybody people, I told some people, you know, a lot of the people are like, you know, we can't tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. Like Dan Rivera from Nesper, he's the lead investor. He goes, Bill, I'm not going to tell you what to do. It's up to you what you want to do. And we're going to help you and assist you in any way possible. But I can't put words in your mouth. you got to do it yourself. If you don't want to get rid of the demon, don't get rid of the demon. You know, Sean thinks, you know, if I do this, then I won't have any more paranormal activity. And that's the whole reason why we want this house to be the way it is. Look at the house on Round Top Hill in Rhode Island, the first conjuring. That place is haunted as hell. Mm-hmm. It's got demons in there. They haven't exercised it. You know? And people come pay to come there, and that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I've, I've seen... Me, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, I've seen them advertising for investigations to go into the country, the original country and house. So People pay big money to go there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that. But... Is mine more active? My, I believe my house is more active than the Conjuring house is. It has a story there. My house has a story. Um, I know everybody that's in my home, all their names, by first names, you know, all the resident spirits. Mm-hmm. We've talked to them many times. Um, it says Zachariah is there. So I think it's Zachariah Jr. You have Elizabeth, who is... Um, that's the daughter. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a little boy there, too, and he giggles a lot. So I don't know if that's a demon or not because we had somebody – I have a buddy of mine who comes there and he does pictures with these women. But a lot of these women are in a, are, are like in the occult. They're like they witchcraft, stuff like that. And one of them came like a month and a half ago. She came in by herself when no one was there yet. And she walked up the back stairs from the kitchen to the second floor, and a little boy grabbed her hand. That's the first touch that's happened in our house. Yeah. Grabbed her hand and walked her into the main bedroom where the, where the fireplace is, and it let go, and it giggled, it laughed, and walked away. That's the first time it happened. A week so and a half be- later. Was that, before, was that before the scratches? Yes. Yep. And so I'm like, well, that's the first touching in the home. Now, I don't know. That could have been a demon. Pretty woman. You know, knowing she's going to get half naked in these photos of this old house. And, um, you know, was it, a, was it a little boy spirit all giggity about it? Or was it a demon? We don't know. You never know, will know. So to touch on a point that Ash made, 
So there's been two instances now of, of people being touched or interactions. And it, it started off with, with a door opening and closing. That suggests to me that there is a, an escalation of of some kind of activity. Correct. I believe that the door opening and closing, I think that's Elizabeth. She's just pissed off because we're demoing the house and that was her side of the house. Yeah. And during the first investigation, when he first walked in, he says there was residual energy of a woman on that side of the house. Yeah. So that's her side. And then you got the, the soldier side and he's up upstairs on the first floor I and mean, the second floor in the front bedroom. So each room has a spirit in it. Mm -hmm. The little boy likes to play in the main room. So that's three rooms now, you know, and then you have all the other res, you know, non-resident spirits that come and go. So what was the, what was the plan for the house when you bought it? Was it for you guys to move in or was it as like a, uh, an investment property or investment property? It's still mm -hmm. going to be investment property to, to rent or to, to sell or what? I'm going to rent it. I was thinking about doing a haunted bed and breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Good idea. So do you know if, um, I like obviously the house is 300 years old and going back to Zachariah Curtis, do you know if any of the previous owners, including the ones that you bought, have reported any activity? Is that something that you've looked into or reached out okay. to them? To I know, right. I know of a woman that lived there that I'm personally friends with. She lived there in the sixties. She grew up there. And I asked her, cause I've been doing a lot of research, asking people about the home, their experiences, people that lived there, their experiences. She says, I never had a single experience in my life in that house when I was a kid, but she might have been closed off to it. Mm -hmm. And the spirits are just content with what was going on. Now I got a little, uh, you ever heard of John Zaffis? They call him the grandfather of paranormal. He's Ed Warren's nephew. Okay. You ever seen the haunting Connecticut? Yes. With the mortuary in the basement. Do mm -hmm. you remember the guy that opened the door to the basement and he got thrown across the hallway? That's John Zappas. Okay. He came to my house twice. The first time he came, he also affirmed my gifts. Um, he says his house is full of energy. So I know he's, he's got gifts. He's definitely got gifts. I asked him. He wouldn't tell me what he is. A lot of people are just shy like that. And that's fine. I respect that. And uh, he says, well, I got something to tell you. I was here in 1974 with the Warrens. And he told me that when they moved the barn to build City Line, they disturbed something there. That's all I'm going to say. And it created a disturbance in the home from the barn to the home. So I don't know. They came. He says, I don't know anything other than they, what Lorraine did. I don't know. She blessed the house. I don't know. But she was there. And so was Ed. And he also meant, mentioned about a book of shadows that they found in a house in this area, very close to my house. Whether It could have been in my house. Yeah. But we don't know. He doesn't remember. He was only 16 years old. It's been a long time. You know, it's 47 years ago. So that book of shadows could have came from my home or it came from somebody else. But it was a very, very old book of witchcraft. He doesn't call it witchcraft. He calls it the book of shadows because that's the correct term. So we don't know okay. if it came out of my house, but it would sound like it would. Something, you know, a house being that old. Maybe that's what started all this. But I just had recently two psychic meetings. One thirty in the morning on Thursday, text me and say, this spirit, this demon's been there before the house was even built. It's attached oh, yeah. to the land. So do you know what the land was before it became the house or the property? Um, all Indian land. <laughs> okay. But in my front of my house is the old farm highway. And they were there since the 1630s. Okay. The upper Northfield farms of Stratford. So. Okay. So there's definitely plenty of history there that would suggest that something could have happened. Um, oh, yeah. There was two murders there, they said. One, okay. one 
once in the 1800s and once in the early 1900s. That's what these told these two women told me. And we've gotten it. And um, matter of fact, when the Warrens were there and their second time being there, uh, Eric Ritali was asking questions and it kept on saying murder, murder. Radio kept on saying murder. And then an exoplasm showed up. And we used, we took that picture and we enhanced it. And that's the round ball of light. You see the pictures I showed? Mm -hmm. We believe that's Ed Warren. He showed up okay. in an exoplasm directly underneath the light. Okay. While it kept on saying murder, murder, murder. And, you know, they're not going to say 110% it is, but they all know in their heart it is. That's Ed Warren. You can see okay. his chops. You can see his gray hair. You see his leather jacket. And that's what he looked like back in the 60s. He had the long chops, the long hair, um, the sideburns. And that's exactly what's in the photo. Is that the the photo with the sort of the the light, and then there's um... you see the light underneath it, and then I and then I have the expanded one. We see a guy. It looks like a side portrait. Yeah, right let there. me let me share the screen with you and just confirm. Is the that's the one I'm talking? Uh... <clears throat> is it that one? Yes, it is. That's him. Yeah, and then. Um, well, the shadow figure yeah that's that's it so that they believe that to be ed warren yep 110 percent. i believe that's him okay and the whole team knew right away when they saw the picture they knew it was him yeah so so what what does the future hold for you guys are you gonna are you gonna carry on doing what you're doing and and try and communicate further or yeah oh we're always going to communicate but I was told that once I, if I do do the exorcism, I was told you can't do any more investigations. Right. Why is that? Because then you'll bring it back. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well, I was a little disappointed. Yeah. But I also don't want to lose my soul because I'm being, uh, you know, am yeah. I doing God's work? Am I, am I going against him? You know, that's my big question. Because there's a ton of haunted bride and breakfast around where I'm at, you know, within 20 miles of me. Mm -hmm. There's like two or probably three or four in the state of Connecticut. And, you know, people do their thing and that's it. But they're selling that round top house, the conjuring house, they're selling it. And I think it's, it's, it's wearing them down. Yeah. And I wonder why, but they don't tell you why that's their personal choice. But I yeah. think that whatever's happening there, whatever's going on, they're being worn down, and they're getting rid of it. Because I think any time there's a, a, some kind of dark energy there, uh, that that's got to be sapping of your your own personal energy. I can't see how that's a good a good thing. So I think by by keeping or trying to keep the demon there, that that's that can't do anything good. Long term, I, I personally think if I exercise the property, I don't think it's going to get rid of all the spirits. No, because there's an open portal now. If he's able to close the portal, that's a different story. But even then, are the resident spirits going to stay? I can never get a straight answer from anybody. I mean, I know you could get rid of the demon, but are you getting rid of the spirits too? Oh yeah. You know, are they if they choose not to follow the light and they choose to stay there? Is he exercising them out too? I don't know. So do you think the spirits ha actually have free will themselves or no? Everybody has free will. It's their energy. We live eternally. That's why I tell people, I go, you know, you, what you do in life carries on after. You got to speak to the man. And there's rules. Mm -hmm. If you break his rules, which are sins, is it a venal sin or a mortal sin? You know, I think spirit guides... They're people that are paying. Uh, they're paying that price. They're, they're, they have to work to, to to earn their right back into heaven. Um, I, if that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we we've we've spoken to demonologists. We've spoken to people who have said that they are 
almost like the the access way from earth to the spirit wherever realm into heaven and if you don't um if you haven't met all the sort of conditions for you being accepted into heaven you haven't sort of gone through your rite of passage and your journey then you you would start again until such time um but from what you say there that the spirit guides are in that sort of limboish area so they have to con continue and complete their journey until they've achieved the right um the necessary criteria i would say to to get to heaven do you do you think that's right or? oh yeah 110 percent. almost like i know my intuitiveness tells me that i just know things for i don't know when i ask people and they're like yeah you're right or that's the way it works i mean yeah. it's in the bible have you read not the, bible? In the bible no not have everything you read the bible it. I've never read it from front to back, no. And I'm not super religious, but my understanding of God, Jesus, and the whole thing, I was, I'm not a skeptic, but I mean, a lot of people don't understand why God or Jesus, well, they're all the same, would let all this bad things happen. And I tell people after I started, you know, had these experiences and I started researching more and it just kind of makes sense to go he gave us free will he gave us free will and because of it it whatever happens happens it's not if you pray and you ask he's not going to come into your life unless you ask for him and there's a lot of people look at the left in the kid in, in the united states i don't know what's happening over there but they're pushing god out of everything out of schools out of everything they try to shut down with this covid shut down churches you know they don't want you to be with God. This is, and just like I think it was General McChrystal or General, no, General Kelly, not Kelly. It's just after, before the, everything that was him going on with Trump. And he got exonerated for when they tried to throw him under the bus. And uh, they exonerated him and Trump uh, basically, what do they call that, uh, pardoned. Mm -hmm. He came out and says that this is not, a war that we're, we're fighting a war right now. And he says, it's not just human weapons alone. He says, this we're, this is good versus evil. We're fighting. And this is not just in the UK or in the United States. This is the whole world. There's a massive war going on right now against heaven and hell. It's interesting. You say about the churches being shut down in the U S in the UK, the, U, the churches were actually some of the first groups that were allowed to meet in, in sort of, big groups of people <clears throat> so they didn't really shut down the churches that much in the uk and it is it, we're not a massively religious country um like in the us which i know it is it's it's a much bigger thing um in the us <clears throat> excuse me but um i just want one last sort of question for me is that we we've talked about portals you talked about um, a fifth dimension and th these spirits sort of coming in from a different dimension and they're there all the time and we can't see them so we we've spoken many times from a ufo point of view and from an alien point of view that these beings could be extra dimensional and they're they're here Ooh. all the time we just can't we see them that too, in my house okay so yeah. do you think there do you think there's a, a close connection between aliens or extra yeah. dimensional beings? Yeah, well aliens are interdimensional. Mm hmm Yeah. So how do you fit see that fits in? We we see there's quite a close link between spirits and paranormal and ufology and, and aliens and whatever you want to call them. And I just wondered, is the demon a, a spirit demon or is it something extra well, they're dimensional all mm -hmm. yeah they're all spirits but one has one purpose the other has another everyone has a purpose mm -hmm. you know some are there just because they died and they decided not to go or they decided to just to stay and they didn't want to go some are here for purgatory where they were they didn't go to heaven or hell they're just stuck mm -hmm. um 
you know, every, and, and, and the more, every, everyone has a different reason of being here. That's, and a lot of medians will talk about the fifth and the third. Mm-hmm. They talk about the five and the three, you know, the fifth and the third dimensions. And um, we live in the third, but time and space is the fourth dimension, technically. Um, and the fifth is what we can't see, but it's amongst us. And don't forget, we got like what they said now. We had 10. Now they're saying physicists or scientists are saying we have 13 dimensions. It goes on and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And I had a psychic medium tell me, he goes, Bill, he goes, I don't believe in, well, he doesn't believe in God, which is crazy, but he just believes that there is no heaven or hell. It's just hell is, if you want to call it hell, whatever, the shittiest part is not the first dimension. It goes all the way up seven or 13 levels, wherever every, the higher level you get, the higher, the closer you get to God. So I don't, I could see his point of view, but I don't think that's what's really going on personally. Hmm. Who knows until you, until we pass, we won't know. Very true. Very true. Yeah, true. So uh, thanks Bill for taking the time to come and speak to us. It's been a, thanks for sharing experiences. It's been pretty fascinating to, to hear a bit different some some of our usual stuff that we talk about. So it's been a uh, been interesting just to hear about what's been happening at the house and like you say, the pictures and the evidence that you provided speak speak volumes. So uh, thanks for that as well. Pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg.